Today I want to talk about air masses. When I talk about air mass, in between some concepts which you feel you are not very clear, you can raise your hand and ask me. Okay? Don't worry about that. So, see. My idea is to first finish cyclones. My idea is to finish cyclones. But to finish cyclones, I have to first talk about air mass. What is an air mass? After that only I can move cyclones and option. Generally in geography, we can, I can direct the cyclones without telling air mass also. But here I have to tell about air masses. Okay? That's why today, in climatology, I want to finish air masses topic. Now, basically what is different between air and wind? Wind is nothing but moving air, that's all. When the air is moving, what is wind? Okay? If wind is moving horizontally, it's called advection. If wind is moving horizontally, it's called as advection. Advection means horizontally moving wind. Convection means vertically moving wind. Generally, the word convection means transfer of heat by the movement of particles. It can be water, air, anything. For example, if you take a vessel of water, in a vessel of water, if you heat the vessel, initially the bottom water particles will be heated. These heated water molecules will go up. They will go up and they will heat the remaining water molecules. So, transfer of heat by the movement of particles is called as convection, generally. Similarly, in the on the earth also, this atmosphere, right? On the earth. So, when sun rays are falling on the earth, the sun rays heat the surface of the earth. Surface will be heated. When surface heated, initially the low lying air molecules, see these air molecules, low lying, will be heated, just like the vessel. In the vessel, the fire will heat the vessel, first vessel is heated. After vessel is heated, the nearby water molecules heated. These heated water molecules will become lightweight and they will rise up. When they rise up, they heat the remaining molecules. Like that, slowly the entire water will be heated. Similarly, same in earth also. When sun rays fall on the surface of the earth, the sun rays first heat the surface of the earth. As surface is heated, the air molecules which are touching the surface of the earth, they will be heated by what is called as conduction. Conduction means transfer of heat by contact. If two bodies are in contact, if heat is transferred from one body to another body, it is called conduction. conduction. So, the air molecules which are touching the earth, first they will be heated by the process called as? Conduction. Very good, conduction. After that, these hot air molecules, generally hot air is light, lightweight. When temperature increases, the weight decreases, they become lightweight. When it becomes lightweight, it will rise up, rise up. As it rises up, these molecules will go up, they will heat the remaining air molecules. This process is called convection. So convection means transfer of heat by the movement of the particles. So what happens here if you observe the air is rising up, air is rising up, that is called convection. If air is moving horizontally, it is called advection. Both are winds only. Wind is moving air. Now, now let us come to what is air mass. See, air mass means in some places, let us say this is the surface. This can be land surface or ocean surface, any surface, earth, surface of the earth, land or whatever. Sometimes the air, this is all air. Air means which is not moving. Generally air means not moving. Wind means moving. Okay. This is air. This air, sometimes air stays on a surface which has uniform temperature, uniform humidity for long distance. Almost, almost hundreds of kilometers, hundreds, 200, 300, hundreds of kilometers, for long distance, almost 300 kilometers, sometimes, same temperature will be there, same humidity will be there, humidity. See, temperature means you know, no. temperature means you know, measured in the year centigrade, degree centigrade, okay? For example, let us say from here to here, temperature is 30 degree centigrade, same temperature. Similarly, same humidity. Humidity means what? What humidity? Moisture in the... That's all. Humidity means amount of moisture 
in the air. Its actual amount of water trapped in the air is for humidity. Now, if same amount of humidity is there for hundreds of kilometers, then we call that as an air mass. Air mass means large quantity of air, large quantity of air having similar temperature, similar humidity for hundreds of kilometers, hundreds of kilometers, not half kilometer, two kilometers, hundreds of kilometers. One more property of air mass is, if you go vertically, this is horizontal, you know? I discussed horizontal. Now if you go vertically, vertically, it will have same lapse rate, same lapse rate. Actually lapse rate means, lapse rate means reduce in the temperature. See, as you go above that surface, temperature will reduce or increase? Reduce. reduce. So, for example, here 30 degrees centigrade. If you go 1 kilometer high, let us say 24 degrees centigrade. If you again go 1 kilometer high, let us say 18 degrees centigrade. Here also same, 30 degree. If you go 1 kilometer, 24. 1 more kilometer, 80 degree. So, the lapse rate is same. Lapse rate is what? The rate of decrease of temperature is same throughout. This is vertical characteristic. Horizontal characteristic is what? Same temperature, same humidity. Vertical characteristic is what? Same lapse rate. But horizontally, hundreds of kilometers. Vertically, few kilometers. Few. Almost, see, the entire troposphere itself is almost some 10 to 18 kilometers troposphere. The atmosphere, troposphere. Okay? So, some 5 6 kilometers, the air mass will be there. Okay? So, vertically, it can even be hundreds of meters also, meters. But horizontally, it's long distance. That is called an air mass. So, how would we define air mass? You can write down, define air mass. You can write down that. Air mass is defined as a large quantity of air, a large quantity of air, having uniform temperature and humidity and the lapse rate. And lapse rate for hundreds of kilometers. For hundreds of kilometers. So, you can imagine air mass is a large amount of air having same property, same temperature. You can imagine like the air mass will no. Now, where will an air mass be created? Generally, air mass cannot be created at every place. Only few places on the surface of the earth can create the air mass. Those places are called as source regions. Source region. Actually, source region means source region means any area, a region where air mass can originate, air mass can develop. It is a source for the air mass. The region is a source for the creation of air mass. We call it as source, source region. Okay. Now let us see. Let us see which kind of regions can create air mass. All regions cannot create. Okay. See, the entire area, first of all, should be either plain or ocean. It cannot be irregular topography. See, irregular topography means some land, some ocean, a mountain between. Irregular topography. An irregular topography can never produce an air mass because, see, land will have one kind of temperature, one kind of humidity, water will have one kind of humidity because generally if lake is there or river is there, evaporation will be more now. As evaporation is more, the humidity will increase, increase. But air mass means what? Same humidity. So either entirely it should be ocean, water, or entirely it should be land. Land, generally plain land. If, if its hills are there, lot of mountains are there, it will again disturb the air mass creation. Disturb, okay? So, the first quality a plain topography or a ocean having uniform temperature and humidity is a characteristic of a source region. Source region. Do you understand source region? Okay. Now, let us look at some of the famous source regions. There are many source regions, but let us look at the large source regions. Large. There are around some four to six regions, main regions where air mass are created. Those regions are C. In the polar area, in the polar area, the, you know, Siberia, Siberia, or the northern Canada, northern Canada, or, you know, the Greenland. See, for example, if you take the old map, 
take the whole map. This is green land. Green land, okay? It's like this actually. It's like triangle, green land, okay? India, Sri Lanka, this is Indonesia, this is Philippines, Japan, South, Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand. See, for example, Siberia. Siberia, Siberia is a large plain completely covered with ice. Hundreds of kilometers, ice will be the ice. That is why it will have the same temperature. What temperature? Minus 5, minus 6, low. Same temperature. And Siberia will have more water vapor, less water vapor. Less. Because there is no temperature, there is no heat. See, water vapor will come in those places where insulation is more. Sun rays are more, evaporation is more. In Siberia, evaporation is very less. Hence, the water vapor is very less. And humidity also, very less. Temperature also, very less. And uniform, it's uniform throughout Siberia. So this is one, one region, one source region of the air mass. Then, Canada. See, if I USA, see, this is USA, right? This is Mexico. This is Canada. This is Alaska, Alaska. Actually, Alaska is a part of US. US. Okay. So, this Alaska, Alaska region, Central Canada, these are, and the Greenland, Greenland. These are the regions having plain topography, uniform topography with low temperature. They also create air masses, particularly in the winter seasons. Actually, these three things, these four things create air mass, particularly in the winter season. So, see, remember, in winter season, the ground is very cool. When the ground is cool, the air, the air near the ground is also very cool. And cool air is heavy or light? Heavy. Heavy. Heavy, heavy air. Can heavy air rise up or stay there only? Stay. It stay there only. So as the air stays there only, it will, it will, it will be able to stay for a long time. That is why air mass is created. Remember, one of the conditions for the formation of air mass is that the air has to stay there for a long time. If the air stays on a region for a long time, it will acquire the same temperature, same the properties can acquire. Sufficient time is required. Within one day, within two days, air mass cannot be created. It takes sufficient number of days. So, the air should be stable. If it is unstable, turbulent, if it is moving up, moving away, air mass cannot be created. That is why in these areas, air mass can, can be created in the winter season because in winter season, the lower air is very cool, very heavy, it cannot rise up, it is stable, hence air mass is formed. These are the various conditions you have to remember for formation of air mass. Okay? This is one source reason. Second is the, the maritime areas, the oceanic areas, for example, see, the Arctic Sea, the Arctic Sea here, the Arctic Sea. Okay? Or this, this sea, sea between the North America and Europe. Europe, this sea. Or you know, this sea, see here. These seas are very cool, even this sea. This sea. Near the Aleutian Islands. Actually, Aleutian Islands means in the world map, this is connected to this one. On the board, you know, you see the world map, this eastern Russia, Siberia, is connected to Alaska. Actually, Alaska belongs to Russia. Once upon a time, Alaska is a part of Russia only. In the world map, Alaska will be here actually. This is Alaska. You don't know. So, Alaska is connected to this one by Aleutian Islands. Islands. Okay? The sea is called Aleutian Sea. Aleutian Sea. It's a very cold sea. So, Arctic Sea, Aleutian Sea, the sea between the, the Northern Pacific Sea, Northern Atlantic Sea. All these are cold seas. In the winter season, they are cold seas. So, these are also famous source regions. Means, the entire ocean have same temperature, same humidity, similar properties are there. That is why they can create air mass very easily. Okay? Then, similarly, in the tropical area, see, these are the polar areas, right? If you observe, polar sea, polar continent. Polar sea, polar continent, polar sea. So, polar area, seas and continents are the two types now. Then, come to tropical area. In tropical area, for example, tropical area, say Africa. Take Sahara Desert. Sahara Desert, for hundreds of kilometers, it is sand, desert. Same temperature. 
Tell me what the high temperature temperature is generally. In summer season, high temperature is hard. Summer is high temperature. And humidity will be humidity. High. High. Low. Low humidity. Because Sahara Desert has no water. Hence, there won't be any water vapor. When there is no water vapor, there is no humidity. So, Sahara Desert has high temperature, less humidity in the summer. So, say, desert of Zeno, all the climate, same area, same properties. That is why air mass can be easily created there also. Okay? This is tropical. That is polar, no? Tropical. By the way, those who are new, one thing you should understand is, this is equator, no? Equator. Near the equator, we call it as equatorial region. Equatorial region. Above the equator, this area is called tropical region. Below also same. Below also same, but I am drawing only above parts. Tropical region. Above that we call subtropical region. Above that we call temperate. Temperate region. Above that we call subpolar. Subpolar region. Above that we call polar region. Same thing in the southern hemisphere also. They are the variants. So, air masses are generally found in polar region and subtropical. Generally, generally they are the source regions. Or subtropical. Tropical. Tropical. Polar and tropical. Most of them found there, air masses. Okay? I am uh, showing this for new students who do not know what is tropical, what is polar, subpolar. Okay? So now, desert. And then, see, in Southeast Asia, uh, monsoon. Do you think monsoon comes only to India or is property of other countries also? Other countries. For example, Southeast Asia has monsoon. Now, in the Southeast Asia, the monsoon area, the entire monsoon area of Southeast Asia also is the source region for, for air masses. Okay? Now, similarly, see the other continental, tropical continental. Similarly, tropical oceanic, tropical maritime, this ocean, the ocean here, Atlantic Ocean here, Pacific Ocean here. These are also source regions, source regions. And other important source region is the equatorial region. This is equatorial region. Generally, when I discuss about the plant and winds, some students already know, some students are discuss. Plant and winds, you see, if this is the equator, north of the equator, there will be northeast trade winds. South of equator, there will be trade winds. So the place where these both winds meet now, where they meet, that place is also generally a source region for the air mass. Air mass, okay? So these are the various uh, source regions for air masses. You can take even Victoria Desert, Great Victoria Desert is also source region for air mass. Okay? So there are the uh, four to six major source regions for the air masses. Okay? Now, any doubt clear? Equator, Dikra, Yes, I understand. You said it's low pressure, low pressure, but still what happens? You see, at the equator, low pressure will not be there throughout the equator. Actually, low pressure exists in side circles. Here, low pressure here. Remember, low pressure belt is never continuous. At some places, only low pressure will be there, some places. Okay? Those places are called as trough, trough. That means any place where pressure is very low. When pressure is very low, wind will? Wind will? Accumulate wind will accumulate there, collide and then rise. Yes. But they collide, collide, okay? When they collide, air pressure is created. And then when it rises up, low pressure is created, okay? Anyhow, so these are the main source regions for the, for the air masses. of the air mass classification. See. Generally, there are several scientists or geographers or climatologists who, who, who present classifications. For example, yesterday, while going through the entire geography option syllabus, I told you that the world climate, the world climate is classified by several scientists. One of them is 
ट्रिवार्ता एवं अगर ट्रिवार्ता पाद द्वेज कोयपेन एवं अगर ट्रिवार्ता इसे सो ट्रिवार्ता इसे ग्रेट जोग्राफर हु जनरली इस फेमस इन कैम्ब्रोलॉजी कैम्ब्रोलॉजिस्ट ओके सो ट्रिवार्ता हैज प्रोवाइडेड वन काइंड ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द एरमस इस थीरी हाउ डू यू क्लासिफाई ओशन It can also be classified based on thermodynamics. Thermodynamics means is it cold air mass, hot air mass, temperature, or is it stable air mass, unstable air mass? Thermodynamics, thermodynamic or mechanical? Thermodynamic, mechanical, mechanical means stable, unstable. Generally, see what is stable, what is unstable. There are many reasons for it. I will discuss one of the reasons. One reason is, for example, this is the surface of the earth. Okay. Now, see. Let us say an air mass is coming to a place. Remember, air masses after they are created, air mass means an air staying on a region for a very long time will develop some properties. You know, after developing those properties, the air mass will not stay there forever. It will move away. It will move away. For example, an air mass. Created in Siberia. Siberia means northern Russia. Siberia is a very cold air mass. Now, after getting created, it will start moving towards India and China. From Russia, in the world map, from Russia it will move towards India. China and India. It's very cold air mass coming, 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 coming to India. When it comes to China, now the northern China, Mongolia, when they get this cold air mass, now some people will affect it. Their health will affect. Some of them will even die. It's very, it's called cold virus. Very cold air. But in India, fortunately, some Himalayas, Himalayas, very good. There are Himalayas in India. These Himalayas stop the air mass. If Himalayas are not there, one of the old UPSC questions, the question was, if there is no Himalaya, discuss various things that can happen to India. In the answer, one of the things is, Siberian cold air mass in the winter season, it will come to India. Entire North India will be greatly affected. It can even kill people very easily. It's very cold air mass. Okay? Just like how heat, heat waves kill people, cold waves also can kill people. Okay? Other effects of Himalaya, if Himalaya is not there, no, Himalayan rivers, Ganga River, these rivers, they will not have the glaciers too. If there are no glaciers, it will not be there. Let you write, if Himalaya is not there, uh, the borders of India and China will not be uh, proper. You can read me another point like this. Anyhow, the point is, the point of discussion is, air mass will move away. Air mass after getting created, they will move away now. Now, when air mass is moving from the source region to the destination, for example, here, Siberian air mass, source region is Siberia, destination is India, China, whatever. When it is coming, on the way, it will be modified. There are two things here. When the air mass created here in the source region, source region is coming to destination region. This is destination. When it is coming, on the way, there are many countries now. Many places will be there now. This air mass, when it is coming, it will change the weather of the track regions. Track region means the region on which it is moving, track. The train track is the track for the air mass. The air mass will change the weather of the track region and the track region also will change the air mass. For example, this is a very cold air mass which is coming. But here, let us say it is very hot here. Very hot. When the cold air comes into a hot area, it will be heated from below. It will be heated from below. So this is air mass, okay? It's coming. It came to a hot area. Hot area means land is hot. So the bottom of the air mass will be heated. It will become very hot. When the air becomes hot, it will rise up. When the air rises up, it can even form clouds. It can even form clouds. Rainfall can happen because of which the air mass is modified now. The actual air mass is different, but it's modified now. Completely modified, right? So so like that, an air mass can be, now I'll tell you what is stable and unstable. Let us say one air mass is coming. 
below it is very hot very hot compared to the inverse then the bottom air will be heated and this heated air it will rise up it will rise up it rises up this wind becomes un this air must be unstable this is called unstable air mass it becomes unstable similarly let us say one hot air mass is coming it's very hot warm warm but below it is very cool below very cool so this will be cool the below will be cool when the bottom of the air mass is cooled will it become stable or unstable stable, stable. because cool air is very heavy it cannot rise up it will stay there all. because of which it will become stable stable this is called stable this is called unstable these these things are called thermodynamic changes to the air mass or mechanical changes to the air mass actually air mass is original at the place but during its traveling it is modified modified how it is modified thermodynamically modified mechanically modified thermodynamically means temperature changes mechanical modification is becoming stable unstable that kind of modification okay so this, this is called modification of air mass modification of air mass okay now now
again the continental there will be cold air mass cold cold means which which letter should i use cr 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 use no to other letter huh c c r co co is to know cold okay cr is cold then warm warm which letter warm warm double okay warm so cold air warm see this cold and warm no does not depend upon the temperature of air mass the misconception it depends on the comparison of the air mass and the track region track for example what air mass is there let us say there is an air mass its temperature is 20 degrees centigrade air mass the air mass is traveling 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 on its way it came to one region that region's temperature is 30 degrees centigrade when the air mass comes here the air mass is called cold or hot air mass cold, cold air mass because the air mass is 20 the air is 30 but if it comes to an area having 50 centigrade then air mass is called as warm so same air mass can be called as a cold air mass or warm air mass based on track region very good track not based on the temperature of the air mass that is the first of all but this is different continent maritime this is based on the source region source this is based on the track region that is the most important thing here okay most important here also maritime also you can call cold warm here also cold air mass or means any air mass see but trivastra has given only this theory geographical after that we are making uh, thermodynamic and uh, mechanical classifications not given trivartha that is not given trivartha the question is discuss trivartha's classification in the answer first you have to say trivartha classification geographical in nature he talked about the polar tropical continental maritime you give examples next paragraph you can say that this can this can be further modified using the thermodynamical and mechanical changes based on the track region and then you mention all those okay Again, further classification is now stable or unstable. For example, this is there. This can be stable. Tell me which, which letter? Yes. yes. Or unstable. Yeah. Which letter? Yeah. Here, here also, stable, unstable. Stable, unstable. Here also, stable, unstable. Everything, stable, unstable. Stable, unstable. Stable, unstable. Anything more wrong? Now, if observe, Overall, broadly speaking, how many types of uh, air mass are there? Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There are 16 air masses. There are 16 air masses. Broadly speaking, 16 air masses. This we call as the classification of the air masses. Classification of the air masses. Okay? So here, First, you should understand is what is an air mass. You should understand. Second, you should understand what are the conditions for formation of air mass. What are the conditions? <coughs> uniform temperature. Source region should be uniform source region. No topographical discordance should be there. Uh, either land or ocean, mixture cannot be there. And it should, it should be there for sufficient time. The air should be there for sufficient time. Time is a very important factor. Actually, there are some important factors in the formation of a movement of air mass. The factors are, first factor is source region. Source region should be uniform, same temperature, no topographical discordance, either land or water, like the source region, first. Second factor is track region, track. Also called as path, track or path. What is the path taken by the air mass? The path is a very regular path, air mass is unstable. The path is geography or group one? Group one. Can you please other other questions there? Funny, please talk to me. Okay. Okay.
the various factors that create the air mass or affect the air mass are number one, source region, type of source region. Number two, type of path, which path it is going, which track it is going. Okay. Number three, number three is see time. Also called as age, the age of the air mass. Actually, with time, the air mass changes. The age of air mass, based on the age, the air mass change. Okay. Yes, these are, these are the main factors. Okay, these are the main factors which modify or create an air mass. Now, so first thing, what is air mass? Second thing is what are the conditions of formation of air mass? Then, what are the various factors that affect the air mass? The general should know. What are the various factors affect the air mass? Time affects the path affects the surrounding weather affects the source region affects the destination affects the air mass. Then, we said about the. Um, Different source regions for the air mass is important. What are the various source regions? I told you, you know, six major source regions of the air mass. Six major source regions. You have to draw the map and show the source regions. Then you talk about the classification of the air mass. In the classification, we talk about geological classification and thermodynamic mechanical classification. Also, what you have to do is material classification. Then totally you have to derive six air masses. And you have to discuss. Why an air mass is called stable? Why unstable? Stable means the air does not raise up. No cloud formation, no rainfall. Unstable means air raises up, cloud formation, everything will be there. Unstable. Okay? Then we talk about what is called air mass, warm air mass. It's based on the path, not based source region. Then talk about source region, this is path destination to track, track region. Talk about this one. Now finally we have come to the famous air mass in the world. We will discuss some of the famous air masses in the world and we, are, we should also discuss what is the effect of these air masses on the local weather. For example, we will talk about the Siberian uh, air mass. What is affecting what is in China? Then we will talk about Greenland air mass. What is its effect on North America? Like that, like that, we have to discuss the famous air masses in the world and their effect on the Local weather, local weather conditions. Okay. Well, see now. Now we can talk about see the uh, North America, South America, uh, Europe and Asia. We can take each continent, discuss the famous air masses in those continents and what are the effects of the air masses on the regional weather. Weather. Okay. Now, for example, we take North America. This is, this is South America. Leave this South America, go for North America. California, actually California are not right California. This is California. Alaska. This is a rapid. Newfoundland, Canada, Newfoundland. In the ocean currents, we discussed you know, lab currents, Newfoundland currents. This is what is this? Greenland. Greenland. Take North America. Let us discuss various air masses coming into North America and how do they affect the North American climate. Okay? First, let us go for polar. First, let us go for polar. Polar, go for continent. Continental uh, polar, polar continental. That means, for example, take USA. Let's talk about USA. Let's talk about USA. In USA, tell me what are the mountains on the west of USA? Mountains are called as? Rockies. Very good. Rocky. Rockies. East are Appalachian mountains. Appalachian. This is Greenland. This is? Canada. 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 Okay? This is Arctic Sea. Not Arctic Sea. Actually, I am drawing like this, no? But actually, in the map, it will be very narrow. North America will be like this, Russia will be like this. Arctic Sea will be Arctic Sea. Which we cannot show in the boat, okay? So now, this is Alaska. Alaska. And here, Aleutian Islands. The islands will turn to whom? Russia. Russia. Aleutian Islands. Aleutian Islands. Okay? Now, now I have to draw this in a larger way. 
I'll not try entirely. Now I'll draw all in the whole outline, okay? North Africa. Oh, see. North Africa, from the Greenland, from the Greenland, the polar continental air mass will generate. Polar continental air mass from Greenland. It will come to North America. Particularly, it is strong in the winter season. Winter season, okay? Similarly, similarly, from Canada. Even Canada, Northern Canada is also very cool. I told you, you know, uh, we, we store the seeds, seeds in the Svalbard. You remember? Svalbard. There is Norway, Sweden, Norway, Svalbard. Similarly, Canada also, Norway, Sweden, just like Europe, Canada also very cool country. It is very cool. So from Canada also, you know, air mass will come cold, polar, continental air mass, which is very cool, very cool. But then in winter, it is very strong. In the winter, why is strong? Because it is very cool now. Very cool now, so, so, so strong. Similarly, from the Alaska, from Alaska also, I am talking about the, the weather of USA. I am taking USA, USA. I am telling different day, was coming to USA, how they affect the USA climate, weather, okay? Alaska also is a uh, polar continental. This is also polar continental. This is also polar continental. Similarly, polar maritime also will come. Polar maritime from where? Both from Atlantic Ocean, see from Atlantic Ocean they will come, Atlantic Ocean. This is polar only, polar river, maritime, ocean. Pacific Ocean also will come, Pacific Ocean. Polar, maritime, will come. I get confused because so many arrows, all the okay? Then, now come to, I, I have discussed all the polar, polar, now come to continent, sorry, tropical, tropical. Tropical order. See, this is Atlantic Ocean now, Pacific Ocean now. From Atlantic Ocean, from tropical, this is polar Atlantic, cool area. This is near equator now, near tropical region now. So, confusion? Anyone confused till here? Clear? Okay. From the Atlantic Ocean also, winds will come. Sorry, air mass will come, air mass. This is called, is, is, is it a tropical or polar? Continental maritime. 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 From the Atlantic Ocean. Pacific Ocean also will come. From California. This is California, this uh, stream, okay? This is continent, tropical or polar? Tropical. Maritime continental. Maritime. But this is Pacific. Pacific this is from the Atlantic. Atlantic, Pacific. This is Canada, this is Alaska, this is Greenland. Okay? Now these are the, even actually they come from the continent also, but these are very less, very feeble and less. These are actually tropical continent, continents from Central America, from Mexico. From Mexico they can come, but these are not very important, they are not strong, they are not very strong. Now see, tell me, oh, first question, in these winds, which winds are strong in the winter season? Polar. That's why what happens, you know, in winter season, these winds will come into us like this. As the winds come, these winds cannot enter. These winds are very weak. In winter season, they are very weak. They enter. But in summer season, which will be strong? In summer season, these will be very strong, very hot now. They become very strong, will come like this. When they come, these winds cannot enter. Of course, both will come all the time. But I'm telling, in winter, these winds are strong, polar. In summer, Tropical strong, strong. Okay. Actually, in the next topic, when we discuss cyclones, I'll come to cyclones. Not now, after some some time. Uh -huh. When I come to cyclones, I will discuss about uh, uh, when I come to cyclones. I will discuss about uh, when this uh, polar continental wind will air mass will come. Air mass from here tropical maritime sea. Polar continental coming you now. Tropical one coming now. This both will come in collide. Yeah. When they collide, do you know what forms? Fronts. Fronts. Fronts will form. Fronts means when two contrasting winds. See, contrasting means this is polar. Hence, it's very cool. This is tropical. Hence, very, very hot. 
This is continental. See, continental. Continent means there is no water vapor. Continent means no water, no? No water vapor, no? Low humidity. Low? Low humidity. This is maritime. Maritime is coming from ocean. Ocean. Ocean means lot of water vapor will be there. So it will high humidity. High? Humidity. High humidity. So see, temperature are opposite. Contrasting. Humidity is also contrasting. These kind of contrasting winds, when to contrast winds come, when they collide, what forms is called fronts. In this area, this combining area, front is formed, front. And how are fronts form? I explain. What is the front I explain? Now from the fronts, we will explain cyclones. Next class, cyclones are explain how front. But you have to understand, front formation can be understood only if you understand what is an air mass, how it is created. Okay? Now, let's move on to USA. Come to USA. When, when the fronts come back, uh, when fronts form now, temperate cyclones are formed. Temperate cyclones. USA is famous for temperate cyclones. Do you know why in USA temperate cyclones are formed? Because of continental polar, continental polar, tropical maritime. That's why temperate cyclones are formed in USA. Because of these air mass form. Okay? Now, now, let us discuss each air mass and set up on the USA climate. Okay? First one. First one, see. Tell me, what is this rocky mountain? Rocky mountain. So when the polar uh, maritime air mass comes rocky mountain, see maritime means it has water level. It has water level. When it comes to rocky mountains, no? Rocky mountains, I have told you, if this is the mountain, when the wind comes and hits the mountain, rises. Wind comes the wind will? Rise up. Rise up. So as the wind is rising up, clouds will form. Clouds. When the clouds form heavy okay. rainfall, rainfall. But see, clouds means what? In that air, whatever water will happen is there, that will become cloud. But the air will stay, the air will go. The air will go like this. The air will come like this. But see, the air here, here the air has a lot of water vapor, high humidity. It's moist air, moist. But this is dry air, no, no water vapor. Why water vapor? Water vapor? Clouds. 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 Rain. Rain for heaven. They are dry. So, these dry winds which come to this uh, uh, east side of uh, Rocky Mountain, this east side of mountains, what they will do now? They are dry now, dry wind snow. So, they absorb the moisture. Absorb the moisture. If any snow is there, they will melt the snow. Okay? But, on the west side of Rocky, west side, there will be rainfall. Here, there will be rainfall. We call it as leeward side. We call this as windward side. Windward. This is windward side where rainfall will happen. That is leeward side where rain shadow region. Rain shadow means no rainfall. Rain shadow region. Okay? Now, now so this is effect of these winds. Effect is you also know. Uh, now, next, come to these winds. Come to these winds. Let us understand the effect of these winds. These winds actually coming through Canada now, from Canada. Actually, on the border of USA and Canada, there are famous lakes called as Great Lakes. Have anybody heard of Great Lakes? Great Lakes. Superior Lake Ontario. Very good, very good. Actually, they will be here like this thing. Great Lakes of uh, modern music Canada. Okay? Actually, the lakes are Some people know what this says, the superman helps everyone, that's their wish, okay? Point is, Lake Superior, Lake Superior, after that, Lake Michigan, Michigan. Michigan. Lake Huran, Lake Huran, Lake Erie, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario. So, Lake Superior, Michigan, Huron, Erie, Ontario. These are the five great lakes of USA, born in Canada. Okay? Now, when these winds cross the lake, you know, this is a very interesting point, observe. This right observe. When these winds cross the 
legs. See, these wheels tell me are these wheels dry or moist? Dry. 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 Because they are coming from the continent. continent. No, no water vapor, no, they are dry. They are dry. But once they come out to the lake, see, lake, tell, I will tell you, in the winter seasons, in the winter season, land is cooler than water. Land is very cool. Water is very warm. In summer season, land is very hot than what general situation. I explained the reason also in the previous class. The reason I explained. Again, next class I'll explain the reasons. Okay? Why land and water? Land or what is the difference? Okay? You you remain me here, land and water, I'll explain later on. We'll please stop it now. Okay? So when this polar continent lane was is coming out to the lake, coming out to the lake, lake is warm now. Compared to compared to this air mass, lake is warm. As it's warm, it will heat the heat the air mass. So air mass will become unstable, 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 unstable. And these lakes will give a lot of water vapor. Lakes is water, no? Water will go. The water vapor will go up. It will form clouds. clouds. From the clouds, what falls down? Snow. So because there is very cool now. Snow will come. In top of equator, rain will come. There snow will come. So. These winds, when they cross the lakes, come to USA. USA, what they will do? Snow. These winds give a lot of snow for USA. This is called lake snow effect. This is called, this is called as uh, lake, lake snow effect. Lake snow effect. It's very important about geography. Lake snow effect. If they ask you about lake snow effect, you are right like this. The polar Continental air mass originating from the northern Canada. When it crosses the Great Lakes of USA, it will be heated from the below and moisture will be added, which will form the clouds. Those clouds will use snowfall in the USA. I'll explain it this. The diagrams. In geography, diagrams are very important. What are you explained, right? Diagrams. When the evaluator when he sees diagram, so this guy understood the concept over. He will not read also. Sometimes diagram is very clear, neat, with all the effects and all. They will not even read the explanation. That is the beauty of geography. In geography, no one writes so many words. Just diagrams are enough. Okay? Lakes no effect. Then here rainfall, the effect of rainfall, here rainfall, here dry. This is the effect of this wind. This will understand, okay? Now, see every wind you have to know to understand. Some, some winds have high effects. Those winds you understand. See, for example, these winds don't have much effect in USA. Some winds have great effect in USA. Those you understand. Okay? Here also, this polar continent, you know, these winds come from between the, what are these? Great Lakes. What are these? Appalachian. They will come from between Appalachian Great Lakes. And, and they will create a, they have a Greenland now. They have a Greenland now. They are very cool now. So they will cause cold waves. Cold waves. Actually cold waves means, I told you, people can hear old people, children, if they are exposed to the cold waves, what happened to them? They will die. Old people, weak people, children, direct exposure to cold waves, they will die. Okay? So this polar continent of Greenland has very neg uh, negative effect on the US. US. Okay? Now, let us discuss about these winds in summer season. These winds, winter is explained now, now come to summer season. In summer season, these, these winds now, they cause good rainfall in USA. Because they are coming from where? Ocean. There are a lot of water vapor. And in Appalachian mountains, in the Appalachian mountains. So they cause rainfall. Rainfall. Okay? And these winds are there now. These winds, in the summer season, they come from the equator, you know, Mexico. They are very hot waves now. They create heat waves. Again, heat waves are like, you know, not good for health. Heat waves means in, in, in India, loop, loop in the Delhi. In the month of May, if you are in Delhi, in the month of May, heat waves will come from Rajasthan or heat waves. They have dust also. Dust storms also occur because dust is there Rajasthan. They have negative health effects. They get a newspaper storm because of heat waves. 30 old people, 20 children die like this. Such kind of negative effect will be there. Okay? Effect of this, effect of this. Now, another important effect is when these winds join with these winds, when they join, it forms the crunch. It causes temperate cyclone.
the next approach. So these are the various uh, uh, air masses in the North America, actually US efforts in USA. Okay. Now let's move on to India. We'll discuss few air mass of uh, Asia. Asia. Okay. Can is the board? Are the diagrams clear? Or are, are, are getting confused? You can use the large diagrams. Large diagrams. You know what the drawing here is? Now, for those who are new, land and water will not expand. I'll explain 10 seconds, listen carefully. You take land, you take water. In summer season, land gets heated very fast. In winter season, land gets cooled very fast. You can see. For example, take land. Take land. Take water. In summer season, land gets heated very fast. Why? Because, see, when the sun rays come now, sun rays, insulation, and the land, sun rays cannot penetrate. Only top some half one meter. Only one meter of land will be heated by sun rays. But water, water, sun rays will go into the water. So sun rays have to heat some 300 meters of water. They have to heat 300 meters of water. Land just one meter of heat. So heating this much water takes a lot of time. It cannot become heat quickly. But land becomes heat very quickly. Easy it becomes very hot. Land. First reason. First reason is depth. First reason is depth. Second reason is water is a very good conductor of heat. Water is a very good conductor. That means even if you heat the water, this heat will not stay there. It will go down. The heat will be transferred. The heat will be transferred. Why it is transferred? Because water is a good conductor of heat. If you take land, if you heat this land now, this heat will not go to other part of land. It will stay there only. Because land is a poor current of air. Second reason. That is why land heats very fast. What hard time. Third reason is movement. Movement. Water, you will heat the water now. The water will not stay there. Water will keep on moving. Even if you heat it, again it will move away. New water will come. Again new water will come. That is why difficult to heat. Land will not move anywhere. To heat the land, it stays there only. That is why land is very fast. So these are the, again, fourth reason is evaporation. Fourth reason is evaporation. What happens in our water? When the heat comes into the water, when sunlight comes into the water, the water evaporates. When water evaporates, no, it will take all the heat away. Take water molecule, take a water molecule, sunlight is coming into water molecule, the water molecule absorbs the heat from the sun. Let us say the water molecule absorbs 2 joules of heat, joules from the sun, heat energy. It will become water vapor. It will become water vapor. After becoming water vapor, heat energy will be there in the water vapor only. It will go away. It will take the heat. Water vapor will take the heat along, heat energy along with it. So whatever heat energy, let us say 20 joules of heat energy is coming into water, 5 joules will be removed by water vapor. Actually, we call it as latent heat of evaporation. We call it as latent heat of evaporation. Latent means hidden, we cannot see. The heat taken by the water vapor is hidden, we cannot see it. It will remove the, all the heat energy. That is another reason. But in land, no much evaporation. Land. Water heat comes, it will stay there only. Nobody will take it away. These are the four reasons why in the summer season, land becomes very hot, water is still cold only. Exactly almost winter. Now see, land becomes hot very quickly. Land becomes cool also very quickly. Why land becomes cool very quickly? In winter season, land becomes cool very quickly because same reasons. Whatever heat is there now, it is there on one meter now. 
it can easily be removed in the form of radiation, conduction, whatever. It will go out easily. But water, 300 meters, it cannot go out easily. Same, same reasons. Because of which land becomes cooled very quickly, heat very quickly. Now tell me in winter season, uh, winter season which is very cool, land or water? Winter which is very cool, land or water? Very good. In summer season which is very hot and water? Land. So, understand. I am basically explaining this because you should understand lake snow effect. To understand lake snow effect, you should know that in winter season, the air mass coming from the uh, Canada goes to the lakes, no lakes. The lakes are warmer than the land. Why? This you should understand. In winter season, land is very cool because land gets cooled quickly and land gets heated quickly. That's the reason, okay? Now let's come to Asia. Asia, okay? This is Africa. This is India. Europe. Australia. New Zealand, okay? Now, this is Siberia. From Siberia, which area must will come? Continental or tropical? Continental. Polar, tropical? Polar. Polar, Polar continental. continental. This polar continental mass comes into China and also comes into India, see. It comes into India, also comes into China. Manchuria, China, all this. Similarly, from here, from the, what is ocean? Pacific. Actually, it's called OK Hot Escape Ocean. Also, Aleutian, Aleutian Sea, okay? It's polar maritime. What are these rims are? Polar maritime. These rims are? Tropical? Same. Same. Once you understand the winds now, you can drive your own. No need to buy out the winds. You can drive your own winds. Different types of winds you can drive your own. See, don't try to buy out every wind. In geography, once you understand like some, something, based on which you draw your own winds. See, all winds are there. See, you can draw the templates of winds. Out of which two or three winds are important. They have important effects. Primary winds don't have much effect to solve. Don't buy out every wind, okay? For example, here, winds coming from here, for example, the winds coming from Sahara Desert, see, Sahara. These are tropical continental. These are hot, hot, okay? Like that, like that you can draw tropical maritime, polar maritime, polar, 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 polar. Particularly these winds cannot enter India because of Himalaya. But enter into China and Manchuria, and there they call cold, cold waves. It reach deaths. When people are exposed to it, weak people, old people, they play. Okay? Similarly, you can say that this will cause rainfall, rainfall. Okay? This is called heat waves, heat waves. This is called cold waves. You can discuss like this. When these two combine, tropical, temperate or cycle are possible. Sometimes, not always. See, whenever fonts form, no, always cycle will not come. When stationary font forms, cyclone will not come. Stationary font. I'll come to, I'll discuss when it comes cyclones, okay? So you can draw like this. In any continent, you can draw like this. In South America, take South American continent, take African continent, draw the uh, draw the tropical maritime, polar maritime. You can draw simply. You can draw this as tropical continental tropical. You can draw the winds, winds will come. But every wind will not have great effects. That's all. Okay? So you can take different continents, explain different winds and name, basically you have to name the wind, tropical maritime, name the wind. And effect, you, you can, you, even you can assume the effect. You can assume, coming from maritime means rainfall, coming from the continent means it's uh, dry. You assume the effects, understand? Now, this is about the air mass.